first of all, it's a delight to be here. Um, now that Farouk has given us the vision, I thought perhaps I could help guide the, the conversation on the nuts and bolts, on how we as a human community, uh, we as stakeholders can engage this uh, somewhat complicated process. Um, I think what's exciting is, you know, as many have stated during these past several months, it's not just civil society or NGOs who are in a state of flux. In point of fact, uh, the entire world is in a state of flux. The governments themselves are in a state of flux. And when you're in a profound transition and a, and a, and, 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 and a state of uncertainty, I think you could respond in one of two ways. Uh, there's the flight or fight syndrome where you shut down uh, and you, you attempt to uh, wall yourself off, isolate yourself from this change, or you embrace the change and you open up and there's a receptivity to new ideas. And I think you see both dynamics in this diplomatic process. So I really find that, uh, you know, the faith-based community, the interfaith community, the spiritual community is an essential core community to engage what is fundamentally a spiritual process uh, in, our, in the development of our collective consciousness, if you will. And, and you know, despite, you know, uh, the worldly cynicism that is often a part of the UN consciousness, uh, the fact of the matter is we're all engaged in it. And I would say in some respects the co-chairs of this open working group demonstrate uh, in practice this receptivity to new ideas, yet being both individuals grounded in the hard political realities of, of the uh, international community. Um, so I wanted to, to perhaps just take a look at some of the entry points in the next several months for this next year, the next couple of years, that you could consider, well, that you're already engaging in point of fact, but uh, you could consider helping to develop. Um, there is actually one event uh, in September that's missing on the chart. I'd actually put, I'd, I would put another square, which is the Climate Summit on the 23rd of September, uh, and this is a, a summit that's been called by the Secretary General. Uh, it is there, actually. Is it there? It's the, in the it's middle missed? there. I missed it, okay. Ah, there we go. Right here. That's it. Okay. So good, it is there. So, yes. Oh, it's too sophisticated, okay. Very good. So, uh, and, um, so let's just take a look at uh, these next several months in terms of um, opportunities for engagement, opportunities for, to make the contribution for our voices to be heard. Um, as Farouk had mentioned, right, you know, this is, this is the last week of the stock taking phase. Tonight, perhaps we'll get some insights into the thinking of member states for the next phase, the report writing phase. Uh, but one thing we do know is that the Open Working Group has already decided to continue its meetings <clears throat> at, these, at these dates here. So these are dates to, to pay attention to. And uh, in consultation with the uh, UNDESA, the organizing partners of the major groups and others, have been consulting on developing modalities for um, NGOs and for the major groups and stakeholders to engage this report writing process. I think what we, you may recall back in September, uh, Stakeholder Forum, Civic Issue, and DESA had organized an in intercessional day whereby we engaged the members of the Open Working Group on a full uh, day of consultation. And the idea is that there was going to be a second intercessional. Well, given this, 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 new, uh, this, this new schedule, what we're uh, consulting with the co-chairs is developing uh, half-day sessions 
for each of these dates where we will invite the participation of the major groups and other stakeholders to engage the members of the open working group uh, in a continued conversation. Of course, it's too early to say what the agenda will be. We don't know exactly how the co-chairs will determine the agenda for each of these. Uh, not negotiations, technically. What do they call it? Report writing. Uh, well, no, they're, they're actually calling them... Um, yeah, I can't remember now, so I'll think about it in a second. Phase two. But anyway, yeah, there, it, but it, it, political discussions. Uh, but exactly, you know, the framework that would be utilized uh, to... Um, it's agreement by consensus, agreement, not negotiation. Okay, agreement by consensus. What's happening right now, hopefully all of you uh, are, are, have been aware of this, is each of the nine major groups have been invited by UNDESA to write a four-page report that outlines that major group's major priorities for the SDGs. And so for the NGO major group, for example, we had a deadline of the 31st of January where we invited uh, NGOs to make their contributions like a one-page summary of their SDG proposal. If you haven't done so, it's not too late because the idea is uh, Lida uh, right now, who is one of the organizing partners uh, of the NGO major group, uh, her team will be compiling uh, the, um, the inputs for this report, putting together a first draft which we will send out for further comment, and then we'll have, um, each of the major groups will have a uh, thematic uh, paper uh, by the end of February. Moreover, um, you may be aware there are also opportunities for NGOs to come together on a thematic basis. And so each of the themes of the open working group during these past eight sessions, uh, there is uh, on the UN DESA Sustainable Development Knowledge Platform, there is a website that has a thematic clusters where we have invited uh, the constituencies of all nine major groups to um, upload their statements um, upload their articles, position papers uh, on each of these themes and these thematic clusters are also being invited to develop a, a position paper which will be a part of this kind of um, report uh, from the major group system. So there will be a combination of the nine uh, major groups uh, in, the, in their position papers, which uh, stakeholder form, then will develop a synthesis report so that we can identify some of the areas of consensus, areas you know, of uh, disagreement, or, and, and as well as the gaps. Because we as civil society, like the member states, have also been engaged in a stock-taking phase. Each of us whether as individual NGOs or as coalitions, we have developed positions on a variety of issues. Uh, we have developed positions on our own pet causes, if you will, and uh, we have forcefully advocated for them. But we're coming to a point, if we're going to re remain true to the vision of the, of the MDGs and now the SDGs, where we're going to have to make some priorities in terms of which of these issues are going to be goals, which will be cross-cutting, how, you know, what will be the targets, and critically also, how do we develop the indicators that will measure the success of whether or not we've achieved these targets and thus the goals. Yes. Anyway, just to get back to uh, some of the entry points, so th this, this is the immediate time horizon. I would also add, I don't know, uh, again, maybe it's here, up here and I'm not seeing it, but there are going to be a series of, of thematic debates and dialogues by the President of the General Assembly. Oh, that's not on there, no. Okay, so, uh, and... Oh, yeah, the, the VGA stuff. Yes, you're right. It is in the first box on the top left. It's hard to read. Ah, yes, it is. Very good. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, if you get a, get a magnifying glass, you'll be able to... 
I see all those events and debates. So it, it's, you know, I think we're in a situation where be careful what you wish for because one of the major critiques of the MDGs is that there was actually no opportunity for civil society input or consultation in the development of these goals. And so we have been engaged now in a process since um, Rio Plus 20, where we've had ample opportunity. And so before we exhaust ourselves completely, we're going to, you know, come, or we need to arrive at a consensus on these goals, and then we enter the next phase of implementation. I just want to mention the fact that uh, there is the uh, UN DPI NGO conference. It's actually going to be three days now, so it'll be the 27th, 28th, and 29th of August. This is going to be, uh, you know, it, it, this is a significant uh, strategic moment where civil society will have an opportunity to gather one last time before the commencement of the next General Assembly when we are constantly reminded by President of uh, the General Assembly, John Ash, where he is setting the stage for the negotiations of the SDGs of the post-2015 development agenda to begin next September. So um, this conference, um, stay tuned. I'm, I'm the chair of the conference, so we will keep you apprised of opportunities to participate in the planning of the conference. But what we envision is this is an opportunity where we want to bring the diverse constituencies and networks together from the major group system, from the post-2015 development community, as, as uh, Farouk indicated, you know, from the in development community, environmental communities, the faith-based communities, uh, as well as the climate change community and come together so that we can harness our energy, focus our messaging, and prepare ourselves for the negotiations that will commence the following month in the General Assembly and beyond. I mean, it's significant that uh, we have here the UNFCCC. Uh, we're going to have a COP here in December. So this next year is going to be a year of decision making that will, will lead to what we hope will be uh, a year of transformation in 2015. I think I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, um, Great. Thanks, Jeff.